Oops, some are actually okay. And there goes my GPU cooler on the wall there. Will AMD have to recall their 7900 XT and XTX GPUs? The entire internet is talking about that. And I'm not gonna jump to conclusions because look, I have an XTX right here. This was bought from AMD.com and I actually have it in my system right now. I've been testing it with various games and right now it's been running for a long time on Furmark, the GPU benchmark, the same one DeBauer used. Actually, let's switch to that other camera. You can see I'm going to you can see I'm going to show you right in there. That's the 7900 XTX. And that's Furmark running. Let's see some of the numbers. Okay. We're looking at the GPU junction temperature, 85 Celsius. Now the GPU core temperature is about 65 Celsius and you can see that Delta only about 20 Celsius, give or take. You can see there 100% power, 346 Watts. So you can see it's definitely going pretty good. The 85 C in terms of the junction temperature, the problem was people were seeing that number jump to 110 almost immediately or very quickly after starting a game, maybe doing a benchmark like this. You don't really need any type of like odd situation. And in fact, I ran it in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I ran it in various games, which we're gonna take a look and see exactly what's going on. But you're gonna see, is my result going to stay at around 85 degrees Celsius or is it going to jump up like the other ones? This is the AMD reference cooler. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you for helping me reach 50,000 subscribers before the end of the year. Remember to smash that like button and subscribe if you like GPU content like this to help the channel grow. So this is the 7900 XTX and I'm actually running, you know, a benchmark here. Let me mute this so we can hear it. Let's see what happens. This is uh, the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 4K on extreme, 118 FPS, 136, pretty high. Got some coil wine. It's not the worst, but let's see some of the temperatures. Look at that, frames per second and 151. We're looking at the junction temperature, 78, 76. The GPU temperature is 62. Board power, look at that, almost 350 watts. It's boosting over 2417. Okay, so far it looks like this, I just put this in. Uh, this is directly from AMD, 7900 XTX. This cooler here does not have the overheating issue. I mean, this is the first game I'm testing, so I'm gonna test other things, but at least at 4K Extreme here with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, that's a big name. Look at that, GPU junction temp, not really going over 82, 63, 350, 24 megahertz. So now I've tested about three separate GPUs. One is an XTX reference model, the one that we're doing right now. I also tested the Power Color Red Devil Limited Edition, and of course, a reference 7900 XT. All three GPUs did not show any of the same symptoms that other people are seeing. Now, it's still a small sample size. Now, it's definitely a small sample size, but it's hard to judge if the norm is actually the GPUs that I have, if they're okay, or if it's the ones that are giving problems. Like, let's see what the Bauer said. He basically said that he thinks, in his conclusion, that the vapor chamber is incorrectly designed, which would indicate that a recall has to be done because then it's not something you're going to fix in firmware. I mean, my GPU is running fine, so at least my vapor chamber in my particular situation is doing okay. This is a fairly decent airflow case. This is the Be Quiet FX500. I have three 120 millimeter fans on the front, one in the back, two at the top with the AIO. So in general, it's a case that has good airflow, so the temperatures stay pretty good on this GPU. It's not too bad at all. And I don't even think that if the case airflow was necessarily as good if it would really go up to 110. Now, the couple of reasons that people thought this was happening on the AMD reference coolers, which go back to quality control when these GPUs pop out of the factory, basically, 
either the thermal paste isn't good, the thermal pads, the mounting pressure, or could be something with the vapor chamber, how it's designed, something like that. Those are like the leading theories. Now, since my GPU functions absolutely fine and normal, it's interesting to see these others that don't, and it's very possible that there is certainly variation in quality control. Even my NVIDIA GPUs, remember the RTX like 3080, 3090, I had a couple founder editions earlier early on that the VRAM would immediately also go to 110 degrees. I mean, that was like almost immediate. The fans would kick up to 100, even when the GPU core temperature was staying pretty cool, like 60 or 70. That's a massive delta in between. Now, the AMD GPUs are doing a similar thing, the ones that have a problem. And then I had other NVIDIA GPUs that never did that. Like the, you know, the VRAM temperatures would stay 94C, would stay under 100, even in the same conditions. And therefore, a lot of the conclusions were that those thermal pads specifically were bad. Now, if it's the you know vapor chamber or not, I mean, my GPU does work fine here. And the three that I've tried all pretty much have pretty good behavior in terms of their cooling. It's all, uh, you know, a delta that it's acceptable. The highest uh, junction temperature that I saw, I mean, right now, Furmark is still running. 85C is the max. I did see a little bit higher, maybe like 90, 95 at most, I think when I really was running it for a long time in the game. Um, now, I haven't seen anything even close to 100C. And even when I saw in the 90s, the low to mid 90s, that was still well within the specifications. Nothing to be worried about there because the GPU core temperature also went up a little bit. I was in a little bit hotter room than normal. Anyway, very far away from the problems that we were seeing at 110 degrees with some of these people. Now, of course, these people are having these problems. In fact, a lot of them are very viewers here and I've had so many of you guys actually post comments telling me that your particular GPU immediately would go to 110 you did you know you tested it in games you did various things and you actually ended up returning the GPU so that's definitely happening now the question is is it going to be a small group of people is it going to be maybe just a, you know a serial number selection of various coolers maybe a batch from the factory that was done improperly Somebody mentioned that maybe the machines weren't calibrated during a particular batch. Nobody caught it. GPUs went out because I know they probably test at least something, but they're not going to test every GPU, like throw it in an ATX system, for example, because that's going to be way too much time. So something's definitely off with these GPUs. I don't think it's time to go saying it's going to be an immediate AMD recall or anything like that. We have to see how many models are affected and exactly what the cause is. I know that I have a good sample GPU that randomly got from AMD.com. Other people that got it from AMD.com have had this issue. So who knows if it's something with the timing and the batch that it came out. But as of right now, hard to say what's going on. Like for example, when Nvidia had that adapter issue with the 4090, it seemed like a million people had the issue, right? But it really wasn't. It was a very small incidence rate that it just got sort of blown out of proportion because of YouTubers. I mean, sometimes, you know, we talk about stuff and it makes it bigger than it really is. That's why I'm showing you guys my particular GPU to give you a real world scenario to know that, okay, some are actually okay. And there goes my GPU cooler on the wall there. I don't think NVIDIA was too happy about me talking about it. It's actually a 3080 cooler. You can see I had it like taped up to the wall. You see, there's no GPU in here. It was actually water cooled um, at one point. That's why there's no GPU. It's just a cooler, but a little bit too heavy. Maybe the NVIDIA gods are mad about me talking about the 4090 cooler. I'm so sorry. Sorry, Jensen. So sorry. But anyway, got blown out of proportion, the adapter issues and very small incidence rate. But you would think it's a lot more and NVIDIA was going to have to recall the 4090s. That never happened. It was just user error. It got blown out of proportion. The same thing that I'm kind of saying here. We have to wait a little bit and see what AMD comes out and says. Now, there have been issues with the way that AMD has actually responded to this and a lot of criticism of AMD marketing in general. First, the customer service, they did not certain people in the beginning RMAs. Remember the ones that popped up on Reddit? I know people don't like using Reddit as a source for stuff, but that's where people go to complain. So I think it's a valid place not to get like the most 
factual information, but you get an idea of what's going on sometimes, at least if it's not blown out of proportion. It has to start somewhere, right? People have to complain somewhere, either a forum or Reddit, and Reddit just happens to be the bigger forum. Now, the you know that particular user had his RMA denied, and then AMD, you know, furthermore looked into it, and they accepted it, and it seemed like this happened in a few cases where they said, oh, 110 is normal. Technically, yeah, that's the junction temperature, but what's not normal is the speed that it's getting up to there, and the delta between the GPU core temperature and the GPU junction temperature, there's definitely a nuance there that that AMD rep and whatever number of people you know had that same issue, they obviously missed it. So we know AMD is aware of this issue. They're probably testing some cards, seeing what went wrong, just like with the NVIDIA specific issue. So we're gonna have to wait a little bit and see what happens. I mean, DeBauer did his own testing. His conclusion is that it's a problem with the vapor chamber. He has a lot of experience in this type of area with you know cooling products and taking stuff apart so when he says something it's not we don't have to take it as 100 percent. that's what it is but we do have to listen and see if possibly that could be a case in certain situations so i'm curious to see what's going to come out of his particular research into it and there's always other people that look into it a little bit further we typically will comment on it but that's why i want to say mine works perfectly fine and you know who knows how many are out there if it was really a problem with every single GPU, I would immediately have a problem with the ones that I've tested. So at least there's some good news there. And I mean, AMD's marketing has not really helped the situation at all. Remember when they announced these GPUs, one of the big factors was they kept pointing at NVIDIA and saying their GPUs are literally like a fire hazard because of that 4090 issue. And also they kept saying that the, you know, the NVIDIA coolers are way too big. They don't fit in cases, et cetera, et cetera. At the end of the day, the NVIDIA coolers are doing a great job, even with the 4090, especially with the 4080, keeps that GPU really cool, have not been any thermal issues like we saw with RTX 3000. Like with this guy, 3080 had a lot more inconsistencies and quality control issues, even the Founders Edition, which typically does have high build quality. Now, that kind of came back to bite AMD because their GPU that was supposed to be all nice and small and cool and perfect ended up having this very serious issue with who knows how many users. I mean, it's not saying it's like recall level, but it definitely seems like a lot more users than on the 4090 adapter issue. Seems like a lot of people are actually having this issue. So it could end up being maybe hundreds, thousands of people compared to a small, small percentage on the 4090. So that's not a good look on the AMD marketing side. In my opinion, a big company like that, you should not even mention these type of things. I know, I know they're trying to be funny, but when you're making a product announcement, especially something like a keynote, I mean, have you ever heard Apple like just come out and make fun of Samsung or in some weird issue during their keynote. It's not really very professional. And when something like this happens where they have their own big problems blow up in the media, all of a sudden they just seem like they didn't really know what they're doing and it's not really that professional. And then it kind of comes back to the customer service type of area. I mean, I had a lot of people say they're returning their GPU, even if it wasn't having a problem, their AMD GPU didn't seem like it was really a fit for them anymore. And they're getting a little bit disillusioned with A and D and they figured they'd rather spend a little bit more money and at least get the perceived better quality from something like an NVIDIA 4080, which although it's more expensive, the benefits seem to be worth it now compared to the problems that the 7900 XT and XTX have been having. Those are the viewpoints of people seeing the situation unfold. Is it really the reality at the end of the day? I don't think so specifically. I happen to like the 7900 XT and the XTX. I like both. And while the price point of the XT is not that great, the ones that I've tested performed pretty well. I didn't have any of these issues. And I think the GPU pricing in and of itself is very high. So that's a negative point. But so is NVIDIA's. As GPUs, they seem to be pretty good. I don't think people should automatically discount them and throw them out and just go get the nvidia gpu but definitely i see where people are coming from with the marketing problems the driver issues that you know slowly are getting corrected and these cooler issues that are definitely making their way into a large amount of media outlets talking about it and therefore influencing what people think about these gpus and we don't know yet the true scope of the issue one thing that i do know is a lot of reference editions were available i think up to like thirty thousand on launch day which wasn't typical with rx 6000 
never saw that many. Mostly from AMD is where you got them for RX 6000, but for the launch of the 7900 XT and XTX, for example, my local Micro Center day one only had reference editions. They had stacks of them. That's the most I've ever seen. And I guess we got used to Best Buy having all the founder editions for Nvidia. So it's a little bit rarer to see these reference editions. The cooling problems aside, I happen to like the design of the reference edition from AMD. The build quality actually feels really solid. It feels really good. It's a well put together GPU with a really nice design. So it's unfortunate they're having these cooler issues. Otherwise, I like it well enough, even with some of the coil wine that they have. And of course, the AIB models like the Power Color Red Devil, they seem to be less affected by these issues. But we really, it's still an open book, just like the NVIDIA adapter issue that's been closed now. We have to see the extent of this problem and exactly what it means. But I wouldn't go rushing and saying it's an immediate recall because, like I showed you, my sample works fine. So hard to tell how many of them are out there, but it's a possibility that it could be a lot. So we do have to keep an open mind. All right, guys, so remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.